my lovers welcome to my channel my name is made for love and today we're going to look at what's happening in your connection so we're going to look at the energies on both sides and then we look at the connecting energies um between you guys um and for the extended if you have a third party that is linked to your connection you're learning lessons that way and we're going to look at what's happening in that connection okay so in the public reading, let's look at what's happening in your connection. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, let us get a pay baseline energy for um, each counterpart. Okay. Baseline energy for each counterpart. Okay. So let's see. Underneath the deck, we have ether, the seamless, unspeakable. So it looks like spirit is moving um, in this connection right now. Um, and it says here, this illuminated space of no distraction and pure potential is beyond the threshold. It is a centered and present place where all dreams are birthed. So it feels like if you're on the cusp of birthing something new from here you can choose where to go and that kind of crossroads energy precipice energy has been coming out a lot um in the readings what may be perceived as endless nothingness is the illuminated eternal the core that all fears may be peeled back to step through the darkness and realize it's only a short distance from the white void at the center of creation so it feels like, you know, that resistance just before the breakthrough, that's what it feels like. Herein lies the feeling that you may have been striving to meet, yet subconsciously running from. In graceful surrender, know that you are held and drop deeper into existence. All right, so it feels like both of you, you guys are surrendering, not just despair, but surrendering to the energies of this connection. And in this surrender um, is when you guys are having these breakthroughs. It feels like you guys are like tittering on the edge of some sort of breakthrough in your connection. All right, let's see your energy generally. Viewer, we got two. We have gracious receptivity. So right now you're wide open. Okay, you're wide open. You're wide open to spirit. You're wide open to your counterpart. You're wide open to possibilities, right? You're wide open to the lesson. So you are not dictating the pace of what is going to happen. You're responding to different invitations from the universe that are going to be brought to you through lessons, challenges, and, and other opportunities for growth. And it says here, if there were a manual for optimal human experience, one of the most potent points would be gratitude. It is the backbone of all practice. When we shift our perspective from one where we are lacking, needing, and desiring, we temporarily replace the survival factor with the resonance for thriving. Giving and receptivity is a two-way flow. Each allows space for the other. And it says that gratitude, self-love, and self-worth are interwoven with the capacity to receive. So that's where you're at, right? You are the pinnacle of your well as far as as your evolution to this point this is the highest you've ever been in terms of your self-love your gratitude and your openness to experience and your teach your teachability right and once you have that right you're going places right you're going places um and you're moving forward in your evolution and we have um we have the Merkaba here which is the vehicle for evolution um and ascension and the butterfly, which is transformation and wings. And it looks like angelic wings. So again, more um, elevation as well. And it says here, throat chakra, you're expressing your truth. So this is also the most authentic version of yourself that you've been up to this point. I'm sure there are more layers to be peeled back. And maybe a year from now, you look back on this self and you realize, well, you hadn't even recognized the full of who you are anyways, right? So there's always more of yourself um, to peel back. So you're being the most, you're in the energy of being the most gracious, the most receptive, the most open, 
and the most authentic that you've been in your life thus far. This is where you are at. You are holding and embodying your truth, right? Um, your person. Oh, got two cards for them too. All right. Let's see what's happening with your person. Or divine masculine. We have harmonic flight. And this is it here. And this divine counterpart joined by the eternity sign. Um, and this looks like the DNA um, that links the counterparts when we look at the twin ring. So there's some sort of activation that's happening. And it feels like it's really impacting um, your person. It says here, this powerful image represents the divine. We see when we look deeply into the eyes of another and our armor drops. So they have been the most vulnerable <laughs> that they have ever been. And they are in full recognition of you as their counterpart. They recognize you as a mirror image of themselves. And the deeper they fall in love with you, the deeper they fall in love with themselves. Or maybe it's vice versa. The deeper they fall in love with themselves is how they can see the divine within you. Right? But either way, um, this is unconditional love that they're stepping into. And our armor drops. When we meet another being present in the moment with no stories, judgments, or insecurities. So this is truly unconditional love. This is how they are viewing you. But not just you, but also the world, I think, around them. Without judgment and having compassion for everyone that's involved directly with your story. And even everyone um, that they meet. So they too. And they're also open. When we harmonize our energies with another, we soar to the sky, right? So it feels like your connection, as it harmonizes and as balance is created um, within it, so too balance is also created within the counterparts. Or again, maybe it's vice versa, right? As counterparts va um, balance themselves, there's also this harmony that's also happening um, in the higher realms as well. And so high, it's, it's both counterparts moving to higher consciousness but this is your person's energy and even though they're moving to a higher level of consciousness and they're leveling up they're also becoming more grounded it's paradoxical but harmonious right and it says here no one can hold you the way nature can mama nature is powerful is a powerful healer and transmuter of dense energies so they're working the upper realms right becoming more open more vulnerable but at the same time there's a lot of transmutation of dense energies negative experience negative emotions that they're also doing um in the 3d okay now they may actually be um using some sort of meditative or mindfulness practice to help them with this um and then they're also they're saying here all experiences those categorized as good or bad are part of the natural cycle that allows for the continuation of life. So they're also realizing that even though they've had interesting experiences in this lifetime, um, some more intense um, than others, it all happened to get them to just where they needed to be, which is, is in this moment right here, having this experience with you and perhaps others. Okay? Now, so there's really no room for regrets. It's all happening just as it, in, it was intended to happen. You're getting all the experiences that you need for your growth. Are you going to respond or are you going to continue to loop? All right. Energies towards each other. Underneath the deck, we have the elixir of life. So it feels like through each other, both of you have been reborn. Okay? Both of you guys have been rejuvenated. You've gone through this massive transformation where you've been rebirthed and rebirthed anew into a more authentic version of yourself. And perhaps, perhaps you'll go through more rebirths um, in this lifetime as we go through each chapter of our life. Um, and we level up. Every time we level up, it's a rebirth because we're birthing a new self. We're birthing a being that we've never met before. Okay. So your energy towards your person at this time. 
we have the gift. This is how you see them. You're seeing them as a gift. And one of the greatest gifts that you have gotten on this wild ride that you have been on, it is the gift of unconditional love. It is the gift of soulmate love, eternal love, right? Because you know the swans they made for life, right? So they're seeing this as a gift. It's it's passionate, but it is also ethereal, right? Um, otherworldly. Um, and you're grateful to have met them. You're grateful for this journey. Um, and it may have been rough. It may have been tough. But you're also seeing that this is one of the greatest tools there, them, one of the, your greatest tools on this journey because you're finally able to see the mirror image of yourself and make adjustments accordingly. So you see them as a gift, a powerful gift of love. And how they see you, their energy towards you. We have all is connected. Through their connection with you, they're recognizing the oneness that holds all of us together. So you have expanded their consciousness and you've expanded their awareness as to like the all there is, right? And how connected we are. Maybe this person lived in deeply within, the, you know, like the dichotomies. That's not the real word I want to use. Ah, polarities may be better. You know, deep within the polarities of life, things are either black or white, they're good or bad, people are good or bad, that kind of thing. But with your help, they've stepped more into the gray and whatever other colors there may be, right? And recognize that life is one full of nuance, right? Um, and everybody has a story, everybody has the shadow and everybody has a more elevated self, Right? And they're recognizing that we're all connected, right? And we're all essentially the same. If you want to look for differences, you'll find it. But when you really look for what draws us together, we're more alike than we're not. So through you, there's a lot of wisdom that they're downloading about life, about the universe, and the collective energies that hold us together. That vibration that flow that binds all of us and when one thing happens in one part of the world we also feel it and we're all equally linked intrinsically linked with each other so they're recognizing that as well right you know the oneness that exists amongst the collective of mankind right so you're taking them to real high heights with that one right <laughs> all right so let's look at um, thoughts and feelings for each other. Okay. Um, when your purse, when you think about your person, your counterpart, right? Your love, this gift, where is your mind at? All right. We have the magician in reverse. So for some of you, you might be thinking about how this person may have manipulated you in the past, okay? So you guys were not always your best selves, right? You know your counterpart. You may have manipulated them. They may have manipulated you. So they think you are thinking about the past, but you're also thinking about how much you've grown since that time. How you conduct your relationships differently, um, since that time, let's see. When you think about your counterpart, you think about this connection. Where is your mind at? We have the King of Swords in reverse. Now, this is um, the overt narcissist, right? Now, it could also represent um, non communication. We have to see the other cards that come out with it. Let's get two more cards with that. And um, we have the Two of Swords. Ooh. And it says, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's a bit of confusion in mind with you right now. And then we have the sun card in reverse. I see the lovers reverse underneath the deck. Now, as much as you know that this person is a gift and they are your divine counterpart, it looks like 
your mind is taking a long walk down memory lane with this person. And it looks like things weren't always um, sugar and cream and, and spice and all things nice. Okay. It feels like when you met this person, they had some heavy narcissistic tendencies and you got the brunt of it. Right. And the remembrance of this might be making you feel kind of low at this time. You're certainly not happy. Right. So I feel there's an inner conflict within you. You love this person. You do more than you've ever loved any other person in your life. But at the same time, maybe your person has hurt you more than anybody else, right? Um, and that's an energy that's kind of hard to reconcile sometimes. And maybe that's what you're trying to find peace with um, at this time. So you might tell people you don't know how you feel about them, but you do, you feel, you feel conflicted about them. You love them, but they have hurt you. And your counterpart, when they think about you and this connection, we have the Nine of Swords. So this is anxiety, this is fears, this is phobias. And it says Sunday Scaries. We have the Ghoster in reverse. And we have the Ace of Cups in reverse okay so you've triggered one of their greatest fears and it could be lately and one of their greatest fears is to be abandoned right this it didn't start with you but it certainly was triggered in a big way with you right it's to be abandoned and it is to be um unloved okay unloved um and right now they don't know what to think, okay? It feels like usually they can feel your energy quite deeply um, and they don't have to worry or speculate about how you feel because maybe you've always let them know how you feel and it's always been positive. But it feels like lately you've kind of retreated. They can't feel that energy coming at them anymore. So they're wondering if you don't love them anymore, if you um, are ghosting them, if they won't see you again. All their little fears are popping up. Um, Nine of Swords can also talk about depression. So it could be that they do feel depressed um, as well because they think that you have given up on this. They think that you've given up on this. That you don't want them. That you've swiped left. That you've discarded them. That, that, that's how they feel. Oh, that's what they're thinking, rather. That's what they're thinking. Let's look at how they feel. We have depressed. So it feels like this is a shared energy between you guys. You guys are not being um, your best and brightest selves um, at this time. Let's get two cards for you. How are you feeling about this person right now? We have crutch and that means codependence. It means attached. Could be obsessed too. Um, and we have yearning. Okay. So you are longing um, to be with this person um, in your heart of hearts. You're longing to be with this person and it could be even um, feeling kind of obsessed with them um, at this time. So the mind is kind of confused and there's a lot of conflicting thoughts, but the heart is not confused at all. Your person's heart space energy for you. Vengeful. We're going to find out why. And we have desperate. That doesn't seem to go together. 
Let's pull some cards on that and let's see what's happening. All right, Spirit, tell us about this um, crutch energy that viewer is feeling. We have the King of Cups. So you have big love for this person, okay? Um, you think this person is going to make a great spouse, um, a great parent, whether it's a full parent, planned parent, um, human baby parents, right? You think this person is going to make a great parent, okay? Um, and maybe you turn over in your mind the different ways that they can fit into your life. And you yearn to and long to be with them. And sometimes it feels like your world might revolve around them, right? Because you just feel very connected to them. Your mind has you taken a trip, but your heart, your heart is pretty secure and pretty stable. Let's see their heart. They have vengeance in their heart. We have three of ones, you know why? Because they think that you're with somebody else. Um, for some of you, they're on your social media and there's somebody that's giving you all these likes and attention um, and they are not appreciating that at all, okay? And it looks like they're desperate to recapture your attention, recapture your love, re and they're desperate to break the silence because they feel like somebody is poaching on their territory, Now, let's ask Spirit, what is the common energies between you guys at this time? Let me get all the healing cards. What are the energies that are common to both of you at this time? Underneath the deck, we have enlightenment. Yes, definitely. Right, both of you guys um, are elevated at this time. Right, expanding your consciousness, definitely. All right, we have the I ruined their lives conspiracy. So right now, both of you guys are like living in the past. Okay, um, and you guys are thinking about one, the way... Um, your counterpart may have hurt you, both of you. Um, and you may be thinking about the ways that you may have hurt your counterpart. Um, and the different ways that both of you would have sabotaged the connection um, in the past. What else is the connecting energy between you guys? You guys are thinking about the different ways that you guys misjudged each other, okay? I think when you guys came together, it feels like both of you might have been coming out of, you know, situations that weren't so great. And you guys projected a lot of your wounding um, and a lot of your stuff onto the other person. So you guys misjudged each other, misjudged each other's intentions in the connection. Let's get one more card. But what's also the connecting energy is the grace that both of you guys are extending towards each other. Both of you are gracist when it comes to the other person. The kind of grace that you are extending, both of you, to each other, you all would not ever think of extending that to another person. The kind of passes that you are giving this person and the kind of passes that they're giving you they have never extended those passes to another human being. So what would have been deal breakers in the past <clears throat> with other people? They are finding ways to forgive you and, and vice versa. This person could have done the unforgivable, but you found ways to extend grace. And this is a common theme between you guys. So as much as you acknowledge the damage that was done by both of you guys, 
and how both of you misjudge each other. You guys are also extending grace um, to each other as well. <laughs> Let's get some 3D messages from your person. Uh, we'll get advice and then go to the extended. In the extended, as I said, we will look at the karmic connection. And we're also going to look at your person's next actions um, towards you. All right. What does your person want you to know at this time? Let's get some 3D messages from your person. We have, you are on my mind constantly, yes. Do you think about me often? I am celibate and waiting for you. You are my one and only desire. I belong to you. And it is so strange because I did a channel letter for somebody this morning. And this is the question that they asked. Do you think about me often? You are always on my mind. That, that's, that's literally what they said. Literally what they said. So it looks like this is a collective um, energy. Uh, what is your person? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. So we have, and they, they want to tell you, we have that crazy kind of love and hot passion. Even after all this time, that's why we get triggered by each other so easily. And argue, I find it such a turn on when you get mad with me because it shows me just how much you do care. And that's so sexy. So this person like a bit of toxic love. <laughs> just a tad, just a touch of toxic love every now and then to spice things up. <laughs> so they might try to provoke you, make you kind of jealous because they like that reaction. They grew up in a a home or maybe from a family background where this showed people that you cared. Um, what else do they want to tell you? This feels like a forbidden love, but if all love is wrong, then I don't care what others say. I'm madly in love with you and I want you so badly. So for some of you guys, maybe this is something forbidden. Love. There's some kind of societal convention that prevents you guys and from being together acknowledging this love or maybe people just don't approve on either side of the fence right but this person doesn't care anymore i am madly in love with you and i want you so badly you are all i think about so another all i think about card suppressing my desire feels like torture so i often keep my feelings to myself and try to hide the pain okay What else do they want you to know? A few months from now, we're going to see what that's about. I'll pull a card. And then we have, I feel that coming towards you would be a huge risk at this time. And I am not willing to blow up my life as I have gotten quite comfortable settling in. Still, my soul is constantly feeling the magnetic okay so their desire is to come towards you but at the same time and i think this was also in that reading from this morning so whatever i channeled for that person feels like it's a collective energy all right what's happening a few months from now we have the eight of cups Doing the inner work and walking away from things that don't serve us. So it feels like they finally turned their back on someone or a habit or, or a pattern that is no longer working um, for them. Okay, so let's get some last bit of advice on spirit. And then in the extended, let me look at the karmic connection, okay? Alrighty. All right, what does spirit want you to know? Or what this what spirit's advice for you at this time? We have 
surrender your attachment to the results. Okay, so we did have that crutch card and we had that yearning. And Spirit is saying, the formula for success is to do all you can do to make this happen, then let go of the results. I think we got this last week. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it. So Spirit is saying, if you want this person in your life, um, the secret is to let them go. If it is to is, it must is, right? <laughs> it's okay. It says surrender stubbornness. If you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you to communicate more lovingly with others and yourself. So maybe you're not aware of it, but you're a bit defensive. Okay, and because you're a bit defensive, maybe when you're listening to people, you're not listening to understand where they're coming from. You're listening to answer back. But Spirit is saying that right now, what is required is openness. And even though this is the most open that you've ever been, there's still more. Okay? So Spirit is saying, just be remain teachable and open to other perspectives. Because it feels like there's some kind of talk that's coming in here. Um, and you have to really listen. Okay? Um, love, so that was your reading. I hope that, that was helpful. If you can join me in the extended, let's explore the karmic connection. Otherwise, I'm grateful for your shares, likes. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I thank you so much. Take care. Bye.